Every three years, about 10,000 Episcopalians gather, packing American cities, taking over convention centers, hotels, and restaurants. The world's religious leaders watch. The world's journalists look in at what goes on. The web is full of multi-screen reports. It's nonstop morning to night. The energy level peaks, and so do the sermons. Mary Magdalene, present and accountable. That's a disciple. States fight for what is the country's largest legislative convention. Cities are honored to have the thousands among them, and dioceses are humbled to be the host to do God's work. And on March 10, 2011, a joyous announcement rang throughout our diocese and the West. Salt Lake City was selected to host the 78th General Convention in 2015. The Episcopal Church General Convention Office has spent days and weeks in Utah touring what will be the international home of our church from June 25, 2015 to July 3rd. One of the great blessings of having the first General Convention for me in this new role as Executive Officer of General Convention in Utah is that I know the people of Utah. I love the state of Utah. I love the Diocese of Utah. And I know the fine people that you are. I know that there are extraordinarily gifted people who love the church, who love the world, and who are anxious to spread that good news to many, many people. We are so humbled, so honored and committed to show our Episcopalian cousins that we are a place and a people they will never forget. We are very excited and happy and pleased and honored to have the General Convention of the Episcopal Church being held here in the Diocese of Utah. Because this is an opportunity for the Diocese of Utah itself to show itself to the rest of the Episcopal Church and an opportunity for the Episcopal Church to learn more about the state of Utah, the Diocese of Utah, and to learn what a wonderful, great place this truly is. It is one of the greatest faith-enhancing experiences an Episcopalian can have. Our Steve Hutchinson has been to 10 general conventions over three decades. The spiritual inspiration comes for me in several forms. One in the liturgies, which are incredibly wonderful and rich and full with wonderful preaching and liturgy and, and music uh, and participation, uh, often with Eucharists involving three or four or 5,000 people. Like other conventions, there are exhibits and meetings, but it will not be like any convention you've ever been to or seen. I don't think any other convention I have participated in would have prepared me for the general convention. My, really starting with my very first convention, I found it to be a completely transformative experience in my life in the church. To really understand the church and what ministry is about, what lay leadership is about, and what separates uh, or makes different the Episcopal Church from other kinds of denominations. And I was both thrilled and exuberated to learn about that and to find that I could participate in it. And all are invited to participate. General Convention relies on the host diocese, that's us, to supply the heart blood of the convention. And that is the thousands of volunteers who keep it all going. It is a service of love and faith, and you will never forget it. Canon Mary June Nessler has also been to multiple general conventions. This could be the greatest event in our collective church life. I think the faith of many is, is strengthened. We realize, first of all, that we're a church far greater than our own congregations, far greater than our own dioceses. We experience the connection that comes with being the people of God. And now that it is our turn, Bishop Hayashi hopes that you will make it your turn to share in the beauty, joy, and inspiration of General Convention. As a volunteer at General Convention, you will have the opportunity to see the church at work, the Holy Spirit at work, as the deputies or bishops 
meet together, talk together, argue together regarding major decisions that affect the life of the Episcopal Church. You will see the spirit move throughout convention as these conversations take place. As a volunteer, you also will be able to participate and worship at general convention. And worship at the general convention is for many people one of the highlights that they remember long after the convention is over. Yes, it will be a community like you've never seen before. A community of over a hundred dioceses from 16 countries. Thousands of different faces with one faith, yours and ours. To me, it is very important for us to show the whole of the Episcopal Church that we in the Diocese of Utah have a vibrant faith, that we in the Diocese of Utah are looking for different ways that God is active in our state, in our diocese, and we are trying to partner with God to do what God wants and what God is up to in the state. We are surely the smallest diocese ever to host the General Convention. And what it means for us here in Utah is to have the Episcopal Church on our doorstep and indeed in our homes. It means that we will be looked at, enjoyed. People who don't know anything about Utah will come and see who we are. They'll experience our incredible welcome. And I think perhaps they may find a Utah a little different from what they might expect. And like they did in the last convention, we will have a Utah night to welcome all to the West. We have been the guests for a century and a half. Now it's our turn to welcome our friends. Russ Pack of St. Paul's in Salt Lake City is our volunteer coordinator. We have 1,200 volunteer spots, and when we come to the time where we're really registering for those, each person will go back online and pick, and maybe only have to work a single four-hour shift. We're looking for short shifts, long shifts, whatever people are able to do is fantastic. So. Uh, if you can commit for four hours, that's great. So I'm counting on you all to uh, uh, show the truth of what I've been telling everybody, that the Episcopal Church is going to be deeply welcomed when we come to the Diocese of Utah. And all of you, with your many, many gifts, will be most welcome to be a part of hosting what I think will truly be a historic gathering of the Episcopal Church at the General Convention at Salt Lake City in 2015. When we volunteer individually, all we need to do is just show up. We'll have on the site, on the spot training, and they'll take us to our location to work, and it'll be very comfortable and very easy. So there's no worries about training or anything in advance, um, or not knowing what we're supposed to be doing. And if all that service, faith building, and learning about your church isn't enough, well, just like in Indianapolis, you will get something great to wear. <laughs> yeah, it's a great gift actually. It's a it's a it's an it's an apron it has our logo on it, and it can be reused for grilling or for arts. And it's called a cobbler, so you could even you could even re recobble your shoes if you wanted with the with the apron. So, so what do you do as a volunteer? Longtime deputies say you make it all work. Volunteers are valued uh, beyond measure. This church could not begin to do the general convention without them. And there are people who so love the role of volunteer that they come convention after convention after convention using their own funds, coming and staying and giving their time, their own vacation time, because they love the atmosphere, they love the prayer, they love their fellow Episcopalians. Volunteers deliver messages, take care of the registration desk, help in the massive exhibit hall, help thousands of people move through the halls and answer questions. What's the weirdest thing anybody's asked you? What is the meaning of life? And it will be volunteers who serve as ushers at the daily Eucharist. By the time it's over, ushers will have handed out nearly 30,000 service bulletins. Some of your friends and neighbors have already signed up this is that once-in-a-lifetime event you won't want to miss. I'm just willing to do it because of how much, how interesting it was and how much really fun it was in Indianapolis. Well, I'm going to work with uh, physical, physical security or personal safety or public safety when I've always thought maybe I was an MP at one time or something. But uh... <laughs> So there are faith-based reasons and community reasons to serve your church 
But there's also one other very good reason. The General Convention actually is a lot of fun. It's, it's hard to believe that it could actually be fun to do this, but it is not only meaningful, it is actually fun. Again, volunteer by going to the Diocese of Utah website and follow the link. Thank you.